him praise. We call him faithful. We call him holy. I call him a healer. Hey, I call him awesome. And then he's all of that. We giving him praise today. We give him glory. We give him honor. Come on, lift him up and give him praise. We honor you, God. We bless your name. We give you praise, God. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. If you know that God is holy and he's awesome and he's a healer, he's your savior, he's all that and so more, let's put our hands together and give him praise.
glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. He is a faithful God. There is nobody like him. And I give God all of the glory, all of the honor for who he is. He is a good God. Good evening, everybody. And welcome to the Tabernacle of Praise Ministries E-Church. We are so glad that you tuned in with us on tonight. Thank you so much for connecting with us. It is our prayer that the service tonight will be a blessing to you and that you will leave the, with the presence of God and his anointing upon you to experience a greater walk of faith this week. If you enjoy the message, please comment, like, love, and share. And if you would like to be a blessing, there are six ways in which you can give. Online, you can give at www.thetopministry.com. In person, you can bring your offerings on your tithes to the business office at 3025 Wood Drive, Northeast, Center Point, Alabama, 35215. You can download the Easy Tithe app. Search for the Tabernacle of Praise Ministries. You can text to give at 205-289-6003. You can even cash out at dollar sign dtopministry.com. To be a blessing to our Apostle Henderson via cash app, you can do that by sending your offering to dollar sign Pastor Lee H. Those of us that have committed to our first fruit offerings, make sure that you have completed your contribution by the first Sunday in April. If you have not committed to a first fruit offering, it's not too late. You can do so by simply contacting the business office and identifying the amount of the first fruit offering. And again, we would like for it to receive that by the first Sunday in April. Please join us in person on Sunday mornings at 1030 and again on Wednesdays at 630. Thanks again for being with us. Have a great week. Praise the Lord, everyone. All over the building, let's praise the Lord, everyone. To all of our viewing audience, let us praise the Lord wherever you are. If you're in your bedroom, if you're in your living room, wherever you are. Come on and let's praise the Lord. Let's show Him how much we appreciate the work that He's doing in our life. Come on and let's lift His holy name up. For he is a God that is worthy to be praised. He's a worthy God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and merciful Lord. Lord, we come here tonight just to say thank you, O oh Lord. For Lord, we recognize that it was you, O oh Lord, that woke us up this morning and carried us through the day for it was you that protected us throughout our journey on this day for Lord you brought us to this point and, and if you brought us to this point Lord we, we know there must be a reason that we're here so Lord we ask on this evening that you allow your mission to be completed in us O oh Lord let your will be done through us O oh Lord Oh, Lord, we are here this evening, oh, Lord, just to say thank you, oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to pray for the pastor and the first lady on today. Thank you, oh, Lord, for blessing them, oh, Lord, and for giving us such a great set of leaders, oh, Lord. Lord, I ask that you continue to 
lift them up and pour into them, O Lord, and bless them, O Lord, and cover their household with your blood. As well as all of those that are connected to them. Lord, I pray for every minister, every deacon, every congregant that's under the sound of my voice and those that are at home in their residence or in their car. Lord, I ask that you cover them. I ask that you bless them in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I ask on today, O oh Lord, that as I come forward to preach your word, that you use me, O oh Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm stepping back and I'm asking, Holy Spirit, that you take over. That you feel me, you pour into me. And I shall follow you wherever you shall go. And whatever you tell me to say, Holy Spirit, I will say it. For I know that your word doesn't come to offend, but it comes to encourage and to convict. So however you take it all, I shall follow you. Because I know that if I'm listening to your voice, O oh Holy Spirit, I know that it will fall on fertile ground. So Holy Spirit, use me on this night. And let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And once again, let us give this anointed choir and these musicians a hand. Amen. Amen. You know, I was observing Pastor Henderson about two weeks ago. And I was observing how he preached. And I observed that he preached with such a powerful message. He preached with such a, a, such a powerful ministry. And I observed how he go from service to service and he preaching his heart out. And, and I know that he can't be preaching under his own might. And I asked the Lord, what kind of anointing is that that is on the man? And before I left out the the building that day, the Lord said, he's a spirit-filled and a spirit-led man. That's how he's able to do the extraordinary because he is spirit-filled and, and he's allowing my might and not his might to complete the tasks that I have assigned him. So I say to each and every one of you, let's give this man of God a hand. Amen. Because he's not an ordinary man. He's an extraordinary man. Amen. He's an extraordinary man. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, not trying to butter up anything, but this message was based on me seeing him preach a couple of weeks ago. And I want to use for a subject on tonight, spirit-filled and spirit-led. Spirit-filled and spirit-led. And I want to use as an illustration a brother by the name of Stephen. And if you have ever read the book of Acts, you are familiar with Stephen. Amen. Stephen can be found in the book of Acts. He was a lowly servant. And Stephen was one of several, seven men who were selected to take care of the business and the needs of the early church and one of his primary assignments was to take care of the foreign widows in the church now mind you Stephen was not that prestigious in the church Stephen was not a, an apostle 
But Stephen performed signs and wonders. Stephen was not a prophet, but he later became a great preacher. And Stephen wasn't even an official deacon, but Stephen was a great servant. Stephen's ministry was short-lived, but his message was very powerful. Stephen was spirit-filled and he was spirit-led. And because he was spirit-filled and spirit-led, God allowed Stephen to perform great works throughout the church and among the people. Stephen was the first Christian martyr who gave his life for Christ's sake. Again, I say his ministry was short-lived and his life perhaps was even short-lived. But I learned by observing and reading from Acts that it's not how long you live or how long you've been preaching, but it's how well you preach and how well you're living. And that's what I want to talk to you today. But I want to use Stephen to help me bring it down the earth. Amen. Go with me to Acts 6, 1 and 8. And it reads, In those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily menstruation. Then the twelve called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said, Is it not the reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among the seven men of honest report, of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Perminus, and Nicholas, a prostate of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests was obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen, who was considered a lowly servant, in the early church, was able to do the extraordinary and perform supernatural miracles simply because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Stephen in dwelling was so amazing that upon him being stoned to death, instead of Stephen begging for his life, Instead of Stephen cowing down, instead of Stephen pleading, don't kill me. Stephen preached the sermon of his life. The Holy Spirit rose up in Stephen. And Stephen looked up in heaven and he seen the Father. And on the right side of the Father, he seen the Son. 
And that Christ-like spirit rose up even greater in Stephen. And Stephen said the same word that Christ said as he was being crucified on the cross. He said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Now, this example of faith and courage shows me that if you have the indwelling of Christ's spirit in those troubled times, in those difficult times, in those times when you don't know what to do or what to say or which direction to go in, we have the ability to become more Christ-like. Because if you truly trust Christ, it is during those troubled times, those difficult times, that you should depend on him like never before. And I'm here to tell you this, this evening that Christ will deliver. Christ will bring you through. Been there and done that. It's amazing to me that when you are at your worst, when you are at your lowest point in life, that's when the Holy Spirit is at his best, leading and guiding you, causing you to do supernatural works in Christ, causing you to do supernatural works in Christ. John 14, 16 through 17 says it like this. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye knoweth him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you and shall be in you. In other words, the scripture is saying, if you are a follower of Christ, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And because he lives inside of you, he speaks to you. He hears you. He directs you, and he empowers you with the supernatural power to do his will. This power enables you to do things that are much greater than you might ever imagine. So when you are in those situations where you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, and you don't know what to believe or who to trust. I want to reassure you that you can trust in the Lord. You can trust in the comforter. Because he's your God who gives you help. He will cause you to say the right things. To do the right things. And he will lead you in the right directions. However... For him to help us, we must be attentive and aware that his presence is there. We must know his voice. We must know his works. You now, even though we say we, we know he's there, there are times in some situations that we forget he's there and he's speaking to us all the time. But the reason we stay in our situation sometimes for so long is because we're, we're not listening to his voice. We're not listening to the works. And his works may not be that great at the time, but they may be subtle. But we got to be able to recognize that it's him that is doing the work, that it's him that is guiding us, that it's him that is directing us. This is something that we need to know. Because there is a deceptive spirit out there. 
It's a deceptive spirit that the guy that disguises itself as being holy. And if you're not sure of your God, if you're not sure of your Holy Spirit, those voices, those prophecies, those works it may fool you. But I tell you, if it don't match up to the Word of God, it's deception. It's unreal. It's setting you up for a trap. It's setting you up for destruction. It's setting you up for a fall. Be aware that there are some skeptics in the world who think that the Holy Spirit is unreal. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they believe that there is a decline in the church assembly. A decline. In the church assembly. And some even saying that the church is being punished right now for the way we have carried on. But I, I want to say to you this evening that the devil is a liar. Because the word is going out like never before. And even though we may not be congregating like we should be congregating, like we have in the past, it's not stopping the word of God. The word is going forward over the radios. It's going forward over the social media. It's going forward over TV. It's going forward, so watch out for those deceptive spirits. Those are the spirits I'm talking about that comes to fool you, comes to, to trick you, comes to take you away from the love of Christ, that have you to believe that if I stay home and worship through TV and in my bed, that I get the same anointing. I get the, the same powerful anointing as if I was in the church. And there are even some that say, I don't need a pastor to, to preach to me because I can interpret the Bible for myself. But the word says, how can you hear without a preacher? How can you hear? How can you interpret this word without a preacher? Because a preacher, he comes forward and he gives you confirmation to the word that you have already studied. I know that I was on the right track with this message because Sunday, my pastor priest touched on some of the same things I touched on. And that was confirmation to me. Amen. So the preacher, the pastor, comes to give you confirmation for what God has already placed in you. I want to say this evening that the Lord is empowering the people to build a church, an army that will rise as a spiritual giant and will reveal the Lord's power in the earth. That's what he's doing. That's why he's giving the church a break. He's just building us, getting us ready for something greater. But we got to be ready. When we come back together, we got to be ready because we got to hit the ground running. He gave us time to rest and hit a word, to build. So when we come back together, we got to be ready to hit the ground running. We got to come together like a strong spiritual army, standing on the word of God. God will call some of us, and we don't have to be ministers. We don't have to be apostles. We don't have to be bishops. God is going to allow some of us just sitting in the pews to do great and wonderful work. Why? Because we got an indwelling of the Holy Spirit down in us. And we'll be able to perform some of the same miracles that some of the people in biblical times perform. If God did it then, he can do it now. 
He's not, a, he's not a man that he should lie. If he did it then, he can do it now. He's not dead, and he still is a miracle worker. He's still performing miracles each and every day. So I'm asking the Lord, Lord, help me to walk into the supernatural so that the world can see that it's your doing, that it's your blessings. And the same thing I'm asking for myself, I'm asking for T.O.P. as well as the viewing audience. Help us to walk into the supernatural where we can perform miracles, where God's blessing can be so abundant over our lives that it will pique the curiosity of the sinner man, make him come to us in curiosity, asking questions. How is it that you do what you do? Just like Pastor piqued my curiosity a couple of weeks ago, I had to ask the Lord, why? And how can this man do what he do, does? And the Lord answered, because he's spirit-filled and spirit-led. So, Lord, that same anointing, that same spirit that you have poured into him, poured into us. Because we are branches of, of him, and he's a branch of you. So let us all go out and do the work that you have instructed us and called us to do. The Lord will use the tools of this world to draw men to him. What I'm saying is God is going to give many of us financial power within this church so people can see that it's his blessings that's upon us. So people who are struggling to make ends meet, people who are looked down upon, people who are talked about because of their current financial situation, People who are dedicated to the Lord will reap the benefits of serving so faithfully and for allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell in them and to instruct them. This will be the Lord's reward for his servants' dedication and their obedience to the Spirit. So if you're going through something right now, I'm encouraging you to stay focused. If you're going through something right now, believe in the Lord and trust in him because he's doing a work. And if by some chance you're having issues with staying focused and, and staying holy, if, if you need to know that the Holy Spirit it's there to help you to live a holy life. When the forces of, of darkness comes against you in a tempting manner, the Holy Spirit is there to help you to resist that sinful nature. Romans 8, 5 and 8 states, For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. And because the mind of the flesh is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be, and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When we are without the Spirit, that's what it's saying. When we are without, without the Spirit, we are susceptible to the temptations of the flesh. But when we are obedient to the Spirit, the Spirit gives us a renewing of the mind, replacing those sinful thoughts with pure thoughts. I once heard a pastor say it this way. And he explained it as such. So with the absence 
of the Spirit, man is alone with his sin. He is utterly alone. Now, the pious fellowship permits no one to be a sinner. So everyone must conceal his sin from himself and from fellowship. We dare not be sinners, so we, re we remain alone with our sins, living in lies and hypocrisy. What the pastor is saying is without the presence of the Holy Spirit, we are alone to battle darkness by ourselves. We're more apt to sin and cover it up, which leads us to a life of lies and hypocrisy. So we act and we play the role well, but our efforts are fruitless because we're not dealing with the situation or dealing with the problem. So I encourage each and every one of you tonight Deal with the situation, whatever it might be. Deal with the situation. If you're lacking in some areas, the only one that can fill that area is the Lord. Amen. Amen. In my conclusion, I want to do something a little unusual. I want to leave you with these words of encouragement. Be alert and think straight. Have patience as you wait for the time and on that day when Jesus will come to stay. Put all your hope on the grace as God has shown in this place and when Jesus Christ appears, returning to wipe away the tears Behave as good children should, doing as God intended it would. Do not allow those lustful fires to set ablaze to those earthly desires. You say that God is your father, just as Jesus Christ is your brother. Remember, he judges what you do. And what is righteous in his view. For he was rescued. For he has rescued you from sin. And has cleansed you deep within. It is up to you to keep it that way. Throughout each. Every day. I'm going to read that last part again. For he has rescued you. From sin and has cleansed you deep within. And it is up to you to keep it that way throughout each and every day. Let us pray without ceasing and repent daily. Can I get you to stand to your feet all over the building as we go forth in prayer? Those of you who are at home, I ask that you stand to your feet. And if you're riding in your vehicles, I ask that you just tune in with a spiritual ear. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come this evening not with a long message, but with a message, oh Lord, that you gave me and Lord, I pray that it fell on fertile ground. That someone or somebody would take this word and apply it to their lives. And it would make a difference. Lord, let the indwelling of the Holy Ghost live within us and direct us into righteousness and into abundant living. And Lord, most of the time when we say abundant living, 
Most people think we're talking about material gain, but Lord, I'm talking about leaving an inheritance to our families. I'm talking about leaving an inheritance to our neighbors, leaving a legacy behind due to the life that we live. So Lord, I'm asking you on today that you allow all of us to live according to your will and that we will leave a legacy behind so that when we're not here, that our legacy will live on in those who we encountered on a daily basis. Hopefully somebody will have words to say that that was a good man or that was a good woman. And her words are etched in my heart. And ingrained in my brain. So Lord as we close tonight. Bless this ministry. Bless the body of Christ. Bless this community. Bless, bless the president O oh Lord. And even his cabinet members. Bless Congress. That we all. That they all can. Make wise decisions based on your godly principles. And that unity can come back to a, the undivided, to a divided nation. Touch, O oh Lord. Touch us, O oh Lord. If there's anybody out there who want to be saved, I ask that you repeat these words with me. Lord, I know I'm a, I'm a sinner. I know I'm prone to make mistakes. Lord, I know I'm not living as I should live. But Lord, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to make a difference. I've been doing the same old thing for years now, and I'm getting the same old results. I'm ready for a change. So, Lord, I come submitting to you, surrendering to you. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died for our sins. I believe that you died for our burdens. And, Lord, I believe that you rose again after your crucifixion, that you rose in three days and you live again. And I confess this with my mouth. And as I confess this with my mouth, I'm born again. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. My mind is in the transforming state right as I speak these words. So transform me, O oh Lord, to walk like you, to talk like you, to love like you, to live like you every day of my life. Let the church say amen. 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 At this time, we're going to switch gears. And I'm going to ask you all that are at home, I'm going to ask the viewing audience, if you would like to share with this ministry, there are six ways that we give, and they are on the screen. We need your monetary gifts because it helps us to complete the work that the Lord has assigned to us. And I'm asking in Jesus' name that you would share with us on this evening. Be a blessing to the kingdom. And help to prepare us for when we come back together. That we can hit the ground running. That we want to be scattered. That when we come back together. That we can hit the ground running doing your work and walking in your will. So if you would raise those offerings up, let us pray. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your people. We thank you for the tithes as well as the offerings on today. And Lord, we ask that you bless those that were able to give as well as those that wanted to give but wasn't able to give. Lord, we ask that you bless them with a 30, 60, 100 fold return and that their household is blessed and that in a short time they will see turnarounds, increases in their household. And not only financial gains, O oh Lord, but bless them that their children, children will be blessed. Bless those who have lost loved ones, O oh Lord, through various deaths. Bless them, O oh Lord. Strengthen them right now. Touch them, O oh Lord, in their bodies. Bring about healing to their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to thank everyone that was in attendance on tonight as well as the viewing audience. Thank you for joining us once again. On behalf of Apostle Henderson and First Lady Henderson, we thank you, and we ask that you view us once again on Sunday morning at 1030 as we bring forth a powerful message from the Lord. And may I say to you once again, may God continue to be a blessing in your lives and in the lives of all those that are connected to you. Thank you, and amen.